the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 156 From the First Book of Kings Dedication of the Temple Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel, before King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled to King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark. And they brought up the Ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent, the priests and the Levites brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who had assembled before him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary but they could not be seen from outside, and they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has set the sun in the heavens but has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have built thee an exalted house. A place for thee to dwell in forever. Solomon's Speech Then the king faced about, and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city in all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart, nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son who shall be born to you shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise which he made, for I have risen in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have provided a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord which he made with our fathers, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon's Prayer of Dedication Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like thee, in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to thy servants who walk before thee with all their heart, who hast kept with thy servant David my father what thou didst declare to him, yea, thou didst speak with thy mouth, and with thy hand hast fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, Keep with thy servant David my father what thou hast promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a man before me to sit upon the throne of Israel, if only your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O God of Israel, let thy word be confirmed, which thou hast spoken to thy servant David my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, hearkening to the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prays before thee this day, that thy eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken to the prayer which thy servant offers toward this place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they pray toward this place, yea, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, and comes and swears his oath before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and act, and judge thy servants, condemning the guilty by bringing his conduct upon his own head, 
and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against thee, if they turn again to thee, and acknowledge thy name, and pray and make supplication to thee in this house, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again to the land which thou gavest to their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and acknowledge thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, thy people Israel, when thou dost teach them the good way in which they should walk, and grant rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence or blight or mildew or locust or caterpillar, if their enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by any man or by all thy people Israel, each knowing the affliction of his own heart and stretching out his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and act, and render to each whose heart thou knowest, according to all his ways, for thou, thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest to our fathers. Likewise when a foreigner, who is not of thy people Israel, comes from a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name, and thy mighty hand, and of thy outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to thee, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know thy name and fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, by whatever way thou shalt send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man who does not sin, and thou art angry with them, and dost give them to an enemy, so that they are carried away captive to the land of the enemy, far off or near, yet if they lay it to heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, and repent, and make supplication to thee in the land of their captors, saying, We have sinned, and have acted perversely and wickedly, if they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their enemies, who carried them captive, and pray to thee toward their land, which thou gavest to their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause and forgive thy people who have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions which they have committed against thee, and grant them compassion in the sight of those who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they are thy people, and thy heritage, which thou didst bring out of Egypt, from the midst of the iron furnace. Let thy eyes be open to the supplication of thy servant, and to the supplication of thy people Israel, giving ear to them whenever they call to thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the peoples of the earth, to be thy heritage, as thou didst declare through Moses, thy servant, when thou didst bring our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Solomon blesses the assembly. Now as Solomon finished offering all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, where he had knelt with hands outstretched toward heaven, and he stood, and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised, not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he uttered by Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers, may he not leave us or forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to him, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances, which he commanded our fathers. Let these words of mine, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, and may he maintain the cause of his servant, and the cause of his people Israel, as each day requires, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Let your heart therefore be wholly true to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments, as at this day. Solomon offers sacrifices. Then the king, and all Israel with him, offered sacrifice before the Lord. Solomon offered as peace offerings to the Lord 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day the king consecrated the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered the burnt offering and the cereal offering and the fat pieces of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was too small to receive the burnt offering and the cereal offering and the fat pieces of the peace offerings. 
So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly, from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went to their homes joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had shown to David his servant and to Israel his people. From the Book of Psalms Praise for God's universal glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His host. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens. And you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded and they were created. And He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling His command. Mountains and all hills. Fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle. Creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples. Princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together. Old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For His name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for His people. Praise for all His saints. For the people of Israel who are near to Him. Praise the Lord. From the First Epistle of Paul to the Corinthians Sexual immorality defiles the church. It is actually reported that there is immorality among you, and of a kind that is not found even among pagans, for a man is living with his father's wife. And you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. For though absent in body I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled, and my spirit is present, with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us, therefore, celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Sexual immorality must be judged. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with immoral men, not at all meaning the immoral of this world, or the greedy and robbers, or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But rather I wrote to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of immorality or greed, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or robber, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Drive out the wicked person from among you. From the Catechism The Last Judgment The resurrection of all the dead, of both the just and the unjust, will precede the Last Judgment. This will be the hour when all who are in the tombs will hear, the Son of Man's, voice and come forth, those who have done good, to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil, to the resurrection of judgment. Then Christ will come in His glory, and all the angels with Him. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left, and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. In the presence of Christ, who is truth itself, the truth of each man's relationship with God will be laid bare. The last judgment will reveal even to its furthest consequences the good each person has done or failed to do during his earthly life. All that the wicked do is recorded, and they do not know. 
When our God comes, He does not keep silence. He will turn towards those at His left hand, I place my poor little ones on earth for you. I as their head was seated in heaven at the right hand of my Father, but on earth my members were suffering, my members on earth were in need. If you gave anything to my members, what you gave would reach their head. Would that you had known that my little ones were in need when I placed them on earth for you and appointed them your stewards to bring your good works into my treasury. But you have placed nothing in their hands, therefore you have found nothing in my presence. The last judgment will come when Christ returns in glory. Only the Father knows the day and the hour, only He determines the moment of its coming. Then through His Son Jesus Christ He will pronounce the final word on all history. We shall know the ultimate meaning of the whole work of creation and of the entire economy of salvation and understand the marvelous ways by which His providence led everything towards its final end. The last judgment will reveal that God's justice triumphs over all the injustices committed by His creatures and that God's love is stronger than death. The message of the last judgment calls men to conversion while God is still giving them the acceptable time, the day of salvation. It inspires a holy fear of God and commits them to the justice of the kingdom of God. It proclaims the blessed hope of the Lord's return, when He will come to be glorified in His saints, and to be marveled at in all who have believed.